Hello, my team friend. So today we are going to um, introduce one of my favorite piece in Gucci music, Ping Sha Luo Yan, the wild geese descending on the beach. <coughs> um, so this piece um, was very popular. It was not one of the uh, oldest piece in Gucci music. There are much, much older pieces than this one. So the first appearance of, um, of Ping Sha Luo Yan is in the early 17th century in the late Ming Dynasty from a Gucci menu called uh, Wu Yin Zheng Zong. Um, but uh, after that, we find uh, Ping Sha Luo Yan appearing in many uh, Gucci menus uh, in the following uh, Ming and, and the Qing dynasty um, until the uh, Republic period. So <clears throat> um, the version that I'm going to play today, the 20th century um, from the uh, Qin Xue Cong Shu, which was um, compiled by uh, Yang Zongji. And uh, Yang Zongji was the going to introduce today is basically based on the Guan Ping Hu version. Um, <coughs> so today there are um, about 40 different versions of Ping Sha Luo Yan still being played. And um, I personally play four different versions. Um, and uh, in the future, I can introduce other uh, versions in Sha Luo Yan, uh, especially um, the Mei'an school, which is very special. So, so all these different versions are related. They can all be traced back to the first published version uh, from Gu Yin Zheng Zong. Uh, about 400 years ago. And um, uh, it must be older than this. So 17th century was only the first time it was formally published, but Ping Sha Luo Yan must have been, um, you know, been playing and um, passing down, um, you know, long before the 17th century. So um, to me, one of the reason why Ping Sha Luo Yan was so popular is because it has the, uh, it represent somehow the, um, the, the classic form of Gucci music. It also represent a lot of the uh, Gucci ideals in aesthetic, in philosophy, and um, it represented the ideal um, of good, many ideals of Gucci music. So it has a classic form starting with harmonics um, and then end with harmonics. And then in between, there are uh, contrasting themes and with variations, which is the focus that I'm going to introduce today. So um, the piece um, also represent the you know very typical Gucci subject matter, which is about uh, landscape and uh, depicting a um, idealized uh, hermetic kind of a lifestyle living among water and mountain, and um, it was very peaceful. Um, and the middle section is very melodic. And then toward the end, there was also the mimicking of the, the, um, the geese cry. So it has a little bit of everything and they come together in a very perfect form. So, um, so it's, a, it's a piece that worth learning and worth um, <clears throat> learning well because um, a lot of other Gucci pieces um, you know, has the very similar uh, kind of artistic form and 
depression. So like many other um, traditional Guqin music and the traditional Chinese music, it started with something uh, very slow and uh, with free rhythm, free speed, and then gradually uh, transfer into something rhythmic, and then the melody start to pick up and introduce the, the, the main theme, and then make a variation of that theme. Um, so it starts with something that is loosely associated um, and then gradually transfer into something very beautiful, very melodic, like a song. <clears throat> and then toward the end, um, it, the melody was broken into free speed again, creating those contrasting themes um, that also um, can be imagined as, um, you know, a lot of different things. Um, so like, you know, like the, the geese and um, the cloud, um, the water, the sand beach, uh, misty landscape, etc. And then uh, eventually it also ended with a very peaceful and slow uh, movement with harmonics. So uh, the music start with harmonics and um, the first section, all harmonics, Right, so this is the beginning, the first section. So, um, like traditional Gucci music, traditional Chinese music, and traditional Chinese poetry, it often starts with depicting the outside world, the nature, and uh, gradually um, the human feeling was introduced and uh, based on um, the you know, touched by uh, the nature. So the first section with harmonics, it's slow. Uh, to me, it is depicting the background for the drama to happen. So um, imagine a misty landscape with mountains in the distance and a river flowing uh, in the middle ground and then sand beach in the foreground, but everything is covered by cloud, covered by mist. It's very foggy. So uh, the mountain come as one piece of band, the river is one piece of band. So you don't see the detail. Uh, so it's a vast landscape and the music notes also need to be, um, to be, uh, quite distantly apart. So it shouldn't be too busy, shouldn't be too close to each other to capture the spirit of a misty uh, landscape, right? So those notes, you should let the notes to fully uh, ring and um, um, do not uh, go to the next note too hasty. Uh, the harmonics, Guqin harmonics, is very beautiful. So let the harmonics come, almost come to its um, to its full length, and then you introduce the next one. So let it fully ring in the air. Let the beauty of those harmonic notes fully display. Right. So. Um, There are certain places that you should breathe. Here I often inhale 
and then exhale with that, that um, with that harmony. So that harmony should last, should let it last. So this is another place where you should breathe. It's like a sentence, a comma, and then the next sentence. Right now, the next uh, section <clears throat> start with something that is still uh, free speed, but then gradually it get into the rhythm. It's free speed. So here, uh, it's gradually getting into rhythm, right? Starting from here. All right. <clears throat> so this sec second section is a transition from the free speed to rhythmic. But it's rhythmic, but it's still pretty slow. It also start getting from the outside world, from nature to the internal world of human thought and human feeling. Um, so um, here, and then the next one. So uh, that um, that part to me is the transition from observing of outside world to the reflection of the internal uh, psychological depiction. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. So here is like an uh, exclamation, like you see the beaut beautiful scenery and you are so moved. Uh, it's like a sigh, um, like you are facing something so beautiful, you realize that nature, landscape, these are so permanent. Um, and, um, um, and then it makes people feel sad, right? Uh, because human life is uh, transient, is short living, and uh, so it's, it's a sign. Uh, sorry. So um, there. So that is clearly um, a human expression uh, <clears throat> and uh, inspired by the beautiful nature and uh, uh, reflect on the internal uh, feeling. Um, Thank you. 
right? So this is the end of the second section. So the second section start with uh, free speed and slow, graduate to rhythmic and slow, and then the speed gradually pick up. So <clears throat> the ending section of the, uh, the ending part of the second section is clearly uh, more, um, uh, is clearly faster than the earlier part, right? So it's getting gradually uh, more notes and uh, like um, representing the interaction between uh, external and internal uh, feeling and uh, from observing nature to reflect, reflecting um, the uh, human, human feeling. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> it also zoom into uh, the landscape and start observing more detail, right? So this kind of uh, more nodes and uh, more uh, kind of a, um, how to say, how to say it, um, you start to see uh, greater detail and the music also, music notes also associate closer and start forming shape. Like from that misty landscape, gradually you start to get uh, greater and greater detail. You can, you start to make out in the distance, you know, here a tree and there um, a hill and uh, there, you know, maybe the water uh, curve uh, surrounding an island, um, et cetera, and et cetera. So we start to have this kind of more detail in music. Now the third section, um, the third section, uh, it start introducing the, uh, the main theme. Um, it starts with, uh, so this, da -da -da -da. so this, uh, motif, um, repeat many, many, um, Make sure when you play this, you need to vary um, the texture, the color, and the dynamic of the note. So the first and second time, I use the flash. All right, so a softer sound, and then um, a little variation. So, um, so these sec. So I use the uh, the nail sound again, right? So it's basically the the I use the nail uh, second, the third, and fourth use flash, and then the the last the fifth time here I use the um, the nail again. So uh, listen to this mo uh, listen to this motif. Yeah, in the beginning of the third. So keep going. So this is the uh, entire uh, third section, very rhythmic. This is the main um, stem, the main um, body of the music. <coughs> so this is the, uh, 
So, um, and then fourth section and fifth section are variations. So this is the depiction of the main theme as suggested in the title, wild geese descending um, on the beach. So here it's uh, depicting these variations depict the different um, variation of the formation of the geese, right? So the fly in the sky and sometimes they form, they form just uh, one line and sometimes curve. So um, the fly, different formation up and down. So the melody should be smooth. And um, so music with uh, very, very melodic and uh, like, like a song. Now the fourth section, um, very good, I introduced, uh, make the sound richer and added more detail and also added more notes. So. All right. Just out of it, but the basic motif, da, 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 right? So um, sometimes it's da da di da 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 da, da and sometimes it's da da di da 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 di da 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 da. da. So this is how Gucci music develop. You know, you based on the same motif and different player might add something and beauties of Gucci music, all right? So you follow the, the mood, follow the main theme, but you can also make your own variation. So. <clears throat> and all these are flash note and then the last one, and then harmony. All right, so very similar to the third section, but the third section is single melody, but uh, the, uh, the fourth section, so instead of so here the fourth section is so here also added harmony all right But uh, the four, on the fourth section, I added only partial theme uh, was being played, and uh, uh, I added more harmony. So the the three uh, section three, four, and five they are based on the same uh, theme, but uh, with different um, sound. So basically, from three to four to five notes get richer and richer and the contrast also get stronger and stronger and uh, speed also pick up a little, all right? <laughs> all right, so fourth section, um, I'm going to also here, um, added a more harmony. So here I added a T, that there are two sound. The so it's only uh, uh, only one, only one sound here. On the 7.6th way of the fourth string, only one sound. And on the fourth section, I did, all right, so it's two sound. And then in the fifth section, the next section, it is going to become, so I added the lunge. So basically you can see in this 
one-based, uh, the main tendency is getting richer and richer, getting a more and more sound, right? So it's like you are observing um, the geese flying in the sky in more and more complicated formation, and you are also observing birds, kind of graceful bird, or um, whatever you are observing, uh, greater and greater detail, right? So this is the fourth section. So uh, this is the fourth section. Now the fifth section, uh, following the same kind of melody and the, um, more complicated, right? Right, so here in the very beginning, um, the motif uh, is, is complicated. So to remind you, in the third section, it started with just something like this. And then in the fourth section, it started with... Right? And then in the fifth section... And then finally, the uh, <clears throat> concluding nail sound. So here, see, I um, use Lun, all right? So the, in the previous two sections, this part is just... Uh, So I add Lun Zhi, all right, richer and more uh, notes, more complicated sound. All right, so here, same thing. Um, I added more harmony. Right here. here. So added the lunge. While the the on the fourth section, um, there was less harmonies um, and uh, <clears throat> fewer notes. A single uh, note, but then. <clears throat> in the fifth section, excuse me. Uh, even here, it was. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> now the music is going to transit to the next stage. So um, in the second section, um, the music start uh, get toward the end of the fifth section, the music getting from um, rhythmic and faster speed to uh, slower and gradually uh, free speed again. So this is the transition back. The structure of the music is very symmetrical. And that note should be fast and um, rhythmic, melodic, the fast and um, rhythmic, melodic.
All right. So here, <coughs> it is kind of transiting. Um, you know, we also talk about transition from the outside to the in inside. And here it is kind of making the other reversed uh, interaction, right? So the same kind of uh, um, it's like after observing this, again, there was a exclamation. It's like, ah, oh, so beautiful. That kind of expression that appeared here again by the previous kind of geese flying in the sky. Um, but it's the same, similar, very similar melody reappear again. So here, um, it getting slower and also the most beautiful, um, most um, at down, lower and a lower and a lower. Uh, to me, this is the psychological transition, and uh, uh, from observing nature, observing the bird, observe. Uh, and um, uh, from observing nature, observing the bird, of their, of deep kind of reflection on the human existence. And um, this kind of psychological characterization of human feeling, that, that, low, that low part, um, starting from here. Very internal. So, um, this low pitch melody, um, is kind of a, um, had a internal feeling, it interact with, with the scene, a little bit sad, and maybe a little bit home missing, right? So uh, in traditional Chinese art, no matter whether it's music or poetry or painting, you know, scenery and human feeling are always interacted. And especially the flying geese had a specific cultural association because you know the geese fly maybe it is flying from you know the geese can fly thousands of miles migrating from north to in the spring so um, it bring people um, certain feeling maybe the geese you know fly had fly passing by uh, your homeland and uh, you, you, you cannot reach um, you by your home. And maybe it is flying toward time. Everyone have a very good uh, understanding of this, but the bird were not limited. They were not quarantined to your homeland, past your homeland, and we can see your home and maybe your uh, childhood house. Um, so it's all that kind of association. And there's a lot of literature in traditional Chinese, um, traditional Chinese, that kind of certain association. Um, so that part, but then there's a percussionist ending of this section
right? So part, um, well, the previous one might be more internal, psychological, but then the last one, um, to me, is mimicking the descending of the geese on the sand beach. Um, that part. So it's like the bird loud. It shouldn't be too uh, violent. Um, the, depic the depiction of the geese are in the air, you know, flying in the sky. But after this, are depicting the bird on the beach. They are walking and they are flapping. And uh, so it's a whole observation of the uh, ac activity of the, um, starting the sixth section, section number six, right? And then section number six, start with free speed. You know, you can imagine this is depicting the bird walking. Uh, so there's a repetitive melody here. So you are observing fewer, maybe just one goose, two, but more and more start to appear on the beach. So the same melody um, become faster and faster, denser and denser, and uh, just like a visually, you spot you know one goose, two geese, and then four, ten, and then a lot, right? <clears throat> so this kind of a then uh, uh, following that. Um, Start mimicking this Qin Xue Cong Shu version of Ping Sha Luo Yan had a more abstract uh, depiction of this Ping Sha Luo Yan. Um, there is a whole um, there is a whole section mimicking the sound, and it's a, has a rich display of the mimicking of bird cries, much longer section and mimicking in much more kind of naturalistic and, and vivid, right? But you can see the uh, original kind of a theme, original motif. Uh, um, again, here it's a free speed. There are only denser note and, and uh, looser note. Uh, you shouldn't follow uh, mimicking the bird cry and the sliding can be longer, can be shorter, right? So if you, you can play shorter, yes, that's fine. But you can also play very long sliding. bird cry differently, right? So you can certainly, density of the notes can also be varied, right? You can play um, greater, you can also play milder, right? 
like greater contrast in speed. Right. So, um, and then you can also play more. Right, so there are many different ways of playing this section. Um, and then the end uh, is going back to the free speed, slow down, and uh, going back to the vast, misty landscape again, like zooming out and going back to nature. Um, so from here, And then the beginning of the coda. All right, so this time we just introduced the big uh, structure and artistic um, treatment of the piece. And next time I can introduce all those different fingering uh, um, is associated. All right, so if you find this video helpful, please 